Hello. Ah. Time to continue our adventure. Uh, so this is basically the transition patch. This is where we start moving from one from one expansion to another. Which is why it says tidings from Garabanya, which apparently that's where we're going. Ah, well, Scouts, just here I wanted to see. Would you mind doing me a small favor? I need you to meet me at the Diamond Forge. This won't take long, I promise. I wonder what Tatar is up to. Maybe she's making us a new weapon? I don't know. Ordered one. I'm sorry to drag you home away from your duties, but as I said, it won't take long. I just need you to stand perfectly still for a few moments. Right, everyone, ready to go to work? No, no squirming now. Oh, and you might want to close your eyes. Ah! Yeah, all finished. The warrior lights every measurement from heroic head to t intrepid toe. <laughs> I love this scene so much. Oh, wouldn't you like to know? All in good time, Eskos. All in good time. <laughs> Ah, found you. I have know once everybody in the soldier for a meeting. I don't know what it's about, but he seems to think it's very important. Go on, we have everything we need. No sense in keeping everyone waiting. We would not presume to begin without you, Ida. Orianger has returned to the Waking Sands, but everyone else is now present. Yes, but for what exactly? We all have duties to attend to, Alphano, so you may dispense with the preamble. Thank you, Elise. It is the very subject of those duties which compelled me to call this gathering. Though the warriors of darkness no longer pose a threat, Eorzea's many troubles demand no less of our attention. And while I stand by the decision to approach each task as we see fit, I fear our effectiveness will ultimately be diminished should we continue to act in ignorance of each other's efforts. Thus, I propose we elect a successor to Minfilia. Not to serve as a fully-fledged antecedent, perhaps, but as a coordinator of operations. Is that all? Well, then the decision seems clear. No one else has shown any enthusiasm for the role, and judging by your performance at our previous meeting, you would seem the perfect candidate. You always did have a flair for politics. Uh, 
I, I did not mean to... That was not my intention. As my tenure as commander of the Crystal Braves comprehensively demonstrated, I lack the qualities required for such an office. I would much prefer to remain as I am now, a soldier in the field, so to speak. Should none of our numbers step forward, must we then constrain some unwilling candidate to take up the position? Well, based on merit alone, a certain adventurer would be my choice. Though I concede he might struggle to balance his new responsibilities with, let me see, slaying primals, thwarting legatuses, and feeding the orphan poor. <laughs> Thancred makes a good point. Any who would wear such a mantle would be bound by its obligations. Have we not become sufficiently familiar with each other's methods to act without an overseer? At present, I see no cause to so willingly limit one of our number. I mean, we kind of already do, and that's Tataru, but that's just me. Tataru, are you all right? Me? I'm fine. It's this poor girl who just staggered in and collapsed on the floor that I'm worried about. Narco. God, how did... Ishola! Please, you have to help her. Kral, a hand if you would. Let us see about closing these wounds. Now, we staunched the bleeding, but it may be a while before you can move about again. Though, having seen your wounds, I'm surprised you are still moving at all. Thank you. My message. It was too important to delay. I took the shortest route I could, though I knew it was more heavily patrolled. As you can see, my efforts at evasion were not entirely successful. Honestly, you're too brave for your own good. What was so urgent that you needed to fight half the Empire to get here? You could have been killed. I'm sorry, Ida. I had good reason. Ah, but I imagine your friends are wondering who this bloody mess of a Mikote is. My name is Minago, and I belong to the Alamegan resistance. I came to warn Ida and Papalimo about one of our leaders. A man who calls himself the Griffin. He's always been dangerous, but he's planning something new. Something reckless. The Griffin, you say? I've heard the name. Rumor has it your man is eager to test his claws. Aye, and on no easy target. He means to assault Belthar's wall from the Alamegan side. But what does the Griffin possibly hope to gain from such an attack? From what I understand, he wants the fires of war to spread to Eorzea. And for that, he needs to control the border with Gridania. So, he means to spark a conflict between the Alliance and the Imperial forces stationed in Alamigo. To have Eorzea's armies aid in the liberation effort, whether they will it or no. His plan is flawed. Even should the resistance succeed in occupying the wall, they would not be able to hold it. Imperial reinforcements would drive them out within a week. Be that as it may, there is even a chance that this scheme could bring about an escalation in hostilities between Eorzea and the Empire. The Alliance must be informed. Agreed. I should depart for Lim Salaminta forthwith and seek an audience with the Admiral. Thancred, Oldar is yours. Alphano and Alize, make haste to the Twelveswood and notify the Elder Seedseer of the danger to Gridania. She will duly call a council of the Alliance leaders, whom you must be ready to receive. You will be our voice in Ishgard. Explain the situation to Sir Emmerich and encourage him to send an envoy. Tataru, Kryl, I leave the care of our injured messenger to you. See that she remains quiescent and her wounds closed. I believe that covers everything. Let us be about our tasks.
I suspect the ill tidings from Girabania will be held as a turning point. The beginning to a bloody end. The business of war was ever conducted with the coin of self-sacrifice. Twas Master Louis Soi himself who taught us that such costs are not to be ignored or denied. And so I shall embrace them. When the time comes, I will make my choice, as you will yours. What is Papa Lou getting about? Greetings, well, you're like, what business brings you Tishgard? I see. Wait here. I will summon Ceramic. It was good to see you, my friend. It is but a pity that I was under such circumstances. Had Lucia not informed me of the urgency of your suit, I would certainly have sent for some wine. But to business, I thank you for bringing these developments in El Amigo to our attention. Ishgard will, of course, send an envoy to attend the council in the Gardania. I cannot say who will represent us, however, as the choice is not mine to make, or mine alone at any rate. Given the eminence, eminence of the threat, we may forego the formalities of a full assembly, but I will still need to consult my counterpart in the House of Commons prior to proceeding. Do permit me some time to make the necessary arrangements. Thank you. A representative who I'm aware select will require a suitable escort. Make your preparations and inform Sir Handelop that he is to lead in your absence. Yes, Lord Commander. Escort, spray accompany Lucia to the gates of judgment and make ready to depart for Gradania. I will have our envoy join you as soon as I can. Here is speed you on your way. If you have any other further businesses, send me. City, join me at the gates of judgment. You must be ready to depart the instant the envoy arrives. We meet again, as it happens, my counterpart in the House of Commons agreed that I should act as Ishgard's envoy. 
Not I can see that there is any real doubt, as though the commander of the Temple Knights is my duty to sanction any military operation. Be that as may, I could not in good conscience make a decision alone, not with the ink scarce dry in the Republic's Book of Statutes. I trust you understand, my friend. Alas, I must test your patience still further by making a brief stop at Camp Dragonhead. Given the trouble brewing in the Black Shroud, it would seem that the garrison is pretty defendable. Yes, and the manor waits within. Uh, why not accompany me, Ghost? You may see a familiar face. Let's go, old boy. How wonderful to see you. And Sir Emmerich, too. What do I owe this unexpected pleasures? I will have some mulled wine brought up from the kitchens at once, if you would excuse. Nay, do not trouble yourself, Anwa. Uh, we shall soon be on our way. Lucia, a brief summary, if you will. Yes, Lord Commander. Hmm. Those villains didn't hardly need an excuse to wait or bloodletting comes as natural as breathing to a god. I mean, to an Imperial. And thus we shall strengthen our patrols at your request. We shall also... Also be sure to communicate their developments to Lord Francel and the Observatorium. I see you have everything in hand. Carry on, Commander. Prize to see your truths at the helm. <laughs> you and me both well, but I don't ever feel worthy to sit where he sat. Yet, we can but put, play the part that we are dealt. With little help from the veterans and the honorable ceaseless chiding, I'm sure I'll muddle through. Don't worry not, old boy. Off to good on you with you. <laughs> Is that honorable <laughs> keeping Emily in check? I'm sure everything will be okay. <laughs> These two are like Inspe Inspector Gadget and Penny. Inspector Gadget is completely incompetent, and Penny is the smart one. <laughs> oh. Diplomatic's duties have brought me here on several occasions, but I find that I am in, as enraptured in by the Black Shroud's beauty now as when at first I laid eyes upon it. I fear that this time, however, events shall not afford us the luxury of enjoying the splendor of the forest. It seems we are to have an escort to the Lotus Stand, a pleasant place to discuss pleasant, unpleasant matters. What? Ah, yes, of course. It's like that we are the last to arrive. Let us announce ourselves, shall we? I mean, I am part 
lieutenant in the in the order of the twin servants i don't see why i couldn't have been the honor guard but maybe it just needs to have somebody lower Umbofer Ishgard is arrived. Very good. This way, if you ah, oh, the Lamentsim party as well. I had hoped to slip in unnoticed, but I see I'm not the only one delayed in our arrival. Greetings, Sir Emmerich. Admiral, always a pleasure. And Essigos, I trust you are well. Tis a day of reunions, it seems. I believe you are well acquainted with my escort. Master Essegos, I'm glad to see you, to hear from Rayot, 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 that the missing silence has now been found. There is much and more I have discussed with you, and let us first attend to the issue at hand, shall we? I bid you welcome, my friends. As you will by now be aware, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have come into possession of certain intelligence concerning recent developments in the region of Gear Abania. It springs, I am assured, from an unimpeachable source. Is that not so, Master Alfinir? Indeed, Elder Sincere. Our information comes directly from a member of the Resistance's inner circle, and we have no cause to doubt its veracity. This griffin of theirs is a fool if he thinks he can hold Belsar's wall against the Empire. When the Imperials move to take it back, they will come in force, and the resulting fighting is all but certain to spill over into the Black Shroud. At the Battle of Cartano, the combined might of three grand companies labored to contend with the remnants of but a single Imperial Legion. Alone, Gridania would be hard-pressed indeed to hold back the tide, should the Garleans turn their minds from reclamation to invasion. May I once more convey my nation's deepest regrets for our inaction in the days prior to the Calamity. Tis a stain upon our ledger that I would fain remove. Elder Seedseer, I do hereby request leave to deploy a defensive force within the borders of Gridania. Ishgard's return to the Alliance shall be honored by more than mere ink upon parchment. The Doman people, too, would join any effort that weakens our common foe. We are few, but our most seasoned shinobi are at your disposal. On behalf of my people, I offer you my humble thanks. Gridania welcomes your assistance. It is time we set our contingency plans in motion. Is the Alliance agreed? And let us make ready for war. Victory favors the swift. There is much to be done. The Council knows that Alamigo will not soon be wrested from the Empire and its decision to bolster the border's defences seems eminently practical. Why then, brother, do you scowl so? I agree that they have chosen the wisest course available. Indeed, the only reasonable one. Yet something feels awry. In making ready for war, is the Alliance not granting the Griffin the very thing he desired? Any attempt to hold the wall is doomed to failure, aye. But I wonder if we have misjudged the prize for which he plays.
That the council is, was able to reach an accord so swiftly is a heartening development in itself. I only hope that my misgivings prove unfounded. Ah, good. You have yet to depart. I fear I missed you. Ceramic. Master Avenue, pleasure as always, and Mr. Sim Elise, how wonderful to see that you have thus recovered. Pardon the intrusion, but I hope to thank Eskers for serving as an escort before our other duties called him away. I also wish to thank our domain ally. Forgive me, my lord. I was but awaiting an opportune moment to join the conversation. Force of habit kept me, made me keep to the shadows. No apologies are necessary, Mr. Shigiri. I was most grateful of your interjection when I offered Ishgard support. My nation's historic failure to heed the Alliance's pleas for aid is a matter of record. Even so, the Alliance leaders are plainly unprepared for my impromptu apology. The resulting air of awkwardness might have triggered longer were it not for your timely offer of cooperation, which allowed the Elder Seeds here to accept us both and very much appreciate the suggestion. I only did my duty, Sir Mick. The Empire is an enemy to us all, and we are grateful for the opportunity to fight at your side. And full glad are we you have. Pray, convey your my regards to the Scions, my friends. We must return to Ishka. Whatever is wrong with the simple story, I thank you. Once these politicians always have a speech out of everything? That is how we adults speak, dear sister. Hmm. They have the ones who like the sound of their own voice. In any case, the business here is concluded. We should be on our way as well. Will you accompany us to Remnant's Toll, uh, Yigiri? Actually, I think I may first pay a visit to the East Shroud. I'm curious to know how Papa Limo and Ida fared in their talks with the Silps, not to mention that what has been going on on Belso's Wall. I will join you at the Rising Stones anon. Welcome back, Eskos. I don't know about you, but I'm hardly glad that all the talking is over. I understand that these council meetings are important, but do you not find them tiresome to have to weigh every word before you speak it? I doubt I will ever feel at home in the realm of politics. That said, everyone has been known to change. If my brother is willing to run his own errands, anything is possible. Well, as much as I enjoy the the bustle of the toll, I think it's time we headed inside. My brother and the others will not be long. Ah, you have returned from the council. And what of Alfno? Did other matter require his attention? My apologies, friend. I trust you have not kept you over waiting over long. Greetings, everyone. Oh, Cryo, how's Naga doing? She will be all right, won't she? I don't see why not. She's sleeping at the moment. The toddler is keeping an eye on her. But we'll know soon enough if there's any change in her condition. The wounds are healing well. With sufficient rest, I am certain she will make a full recovery. Thank goodness for that. Now, mayhap we should share with us the Council's decision. Each of the nations, this God included, has committed a 
related to providing military support to Gadamia. The Aeolian Alliance will soon have a significant force in the Black Shroud, ready to respond to any Imperial act of aggression. You know, I almost wish the Council would stop messing around and give the Griffin what he wants. I wouldn't like to be the Imperial caught between the Resistance eyes. Ida, you cannot be... Cannot seriously... One does not like to go to war with the Guardian Empire. Quite. To open hostilities without due consideration would be to invite disaster. If only there was some way to reach the Griffin, a means to convince him to abandon the reckless course. May not be entirely unfeasible. There is a network of tunnels beneath Balesar's wall. Secret passages dug by the resistance to provide a way out of Alameda, which may, be, may equally serve as a way in. Precisely. If all are in agreement, I would be the one to undertake the necessary negotiations. I am familiar with the route, and the resistance is familiar with me. About as familiar as they are with me, you mean? Say what you want, I'm coming too. With some experience in the practice of infiltration, you would have me my services at your disposal. As are mine, I have been far too long since I shared a shadow with the shinobi. I do not intend to waste the opportunity. Four is quite sufficient for an infiltration mission. Greater numbers will only serve to increase the risk of detection. Rao and I will direct our energies elsewhere. What about you, Leviers? I will return to the East Shroud and stand watch over the border. Should manage to take a turn for the worst, would be wise to be on hand. I did prevail upon you to accompany me, Essigos. Gordania will be safer for your presence, and while I may not seem to be with thrilling duty, Esther, might I ask that you remain at the Rising Stones to pass on messages so on. The whole of the fortune. Very well. I suppose the task must fall to someone. Safe travels, all of you. I, for some reason, am having a hard time creating distinct accents for each of these. So, pardon me for the bland uh, voice acting. Have any unfinished business in the toll? Pray attend to it now. I would depart for the Hawthorne Hunt without delay. The nearby watchtower offers an unobscure view of Balesaw's wall, and I should be interested should be interested to speak to the Alliance commanders who have installed themselves at the top. here. Ah, let's go. So you are. Um, I'm going to say Spire waits. The Alliance officers on the platform should be able to praise this on any developments at the wall. And so meeting the two of you here. We were about to set forth. Indeed, I was about to say 12 watch over you, and I doubt you have need for divine protection, even if you are venturing them in enemy territory. Don't worry, Alpha now. We'll have the griffin by the scruff of the neck before you know it. Do make up your mind, Ida. Never a moment ago, you were seemingly ready to shake the griffin by the hand and rather than the neck. But what is it to be? It would be best to decide before we enter into negotiations. Trust me, Papa Nemo. I'll shake whatever needs shaking. The talking part I leave to you. <laughs> I feel I think I feel a headache coming on. Be on our way, shall we? Uh some things never change. Well then, shall we make 
make for the spire, our line's friends would no doubt would doubtless have news for us. And below. Welcome, Warrior of Light. I, I assume you are here to speak with our commanding officers. We will find them in the observation platform. Pray proceed. Honey! Greetings, my friends. Did good to see you both. I was hoping you might turn up. I dragged half the watch here, see? And the sight of you might help remind him why, why we bothered. Memory says me, I have not seen many of you, many of you since the day of the Grand Melee. Having borne the brunt of your blows, may I say that an honor it is to stand at your side. It's heartening indeed to see the realm's most stalwart defenders thus c gathered in common cause. Speaking of which, what news from the wall? All has been quiet. And tell now. What? Oh. What? Seven hells. Fighting has broke out on the top of the wall. Full scale assault. But the griffin has made his move. Someone has. And what is that supposed to mean? The attackers, they are, they are wearing Grand Company colors. Impossible. We gave no such order. Of course, the wall was never the griffin's target. It was bait. We have been going into displaying our armies nearby, thus lending weight to the deception. If those uniforms are convincing enough to receive the, my scouts, the Empire will surely think that they're launching it, we're launching an offensive. This could mean more. Even so, this may yet be no more of a diversion. With the armies of the airlines occupying the Empire's attention, it would be comparatively easy for the Griffin supporters to slip into El Inigo. He could then, he could in, then incite a rebellion amongst the populace, which the Imperial reserves would be hard pressed to contain. Eorzea, meanwhile, would be plunged into chaos. As it goes, we must make for the wall at once. What? Just the two of you? Our companions embarked on mission to sway the Griffin from this course, and is likely halfway to his companion post by now. They will emerge in the midst of a raging battle, and I do not mean to abandon them to their fate. It will be dangerous, I, but the confusion may work to our advantage. If we are careful to avoid this machine, it may yet be possible to reach the Griffin. And if we can do that... Lady Hilda, might I ask that you have an airship ready to bear the silence to safety? Ah, I don't know who this Lady Hilda is, Marshal, but you can count on me. We must prepare for, for an Imperial reprisals. May the Navigator guide us through the storm. Boy, comrades, the time has come to drive the Empire from Alamigo and forge 
Force action upon those who have turned their backs to our suffering for so long. Let this victory be the first step in the liberation of our homeland. Our amigo will be free, no matter the cost. From what Pavelina would told me, the trail ahead should lead lead us into the shadow of the wall. As you you have two objectives, I suggest we divide our forces. I shall make straight ways for the tunnels and attempt to intercept our comrades ere they stumble into a bloodbath. While I do so, I must ask that you scale the wall. Know that I would not have proposed such a course if there were any other way, but the time for subtlety is past. Take a band of your most trusted companions and cut a path through the griffin. Make him see reason by any means necessary. Once we are free of the tunnel, we are free of the tunnels we make for your position and with all due haste. If everything proceeds according to plan, Hilda will then swoop in and spirit us all the way to safety. I only pray that you have enough time. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, see how the queue time is for this. Well, that's better. Wow. Another option. Here we are. Guess I'm going to take it. All right, cool.
I honestly don't remember this dungeon. So I've been playing a lot of Gunbreaker on my uh, main, and it feels weird <laughs> right now.
I'm a tank of one trash pack at a time. It is more efficient. It is safer. Ill bird. Everybody's already gone because I was watching that that scene. But you cannot stop what I've begun. Behold, a glimpse Pretty of sure things to come. Aye! Victory! 
victory is ours! And who knows, lads? Mayhap the Eorzeans will finally see sense when the enemy turns up on their bloody doorstep. This is for Alamigo, for Eorzea. They die that others may live. Vanguards! Attack! Seven hells. Do you hear that? War machines. How did they get here so quickly? Stand your ground. For the resistance! to run. We're cut off. What were we thinking? The Empire's too big. Too powerful. <sighs> Mighty Rogue. Grant us... the strength. There you are. As you can see, our infiltrators did not elude me for long. Lady Ugiri is sending for an airship even as we speak. What do we do? This is a massacre! <laughs> How wonderful to see you, Commander. Ill bird. I should have known. This has to end. It has to end now! Do you not see your countrymen dying? Have your ideals rendered you blind even to that? Order the retreat, and we will help your soldiers to safety. Retreat? With the moment of my triumph so close at hand, you truly are a sheltered child, Levayer. Nidhogg's eyes! No abyss is too deep for you, I see. But trust me when I say that such power was not meant for mortal hands. How long have I struggled to reach this point? My countrymen, so inured to the taste of defeat, they no longer balk at its bitterness, shouting my throat raw with rallying cries, only to be greeted with dull eyes and blank faces. 
My brothers and sisters in Ulda have surrendered to their apathy and their appetites. Were it not for the glint of Lodorito's coin, I doubt even those here now would have answered my call. Take back our homeland! Free Alamigo! Ha! They'll happily mouth the words, but they won't spill the blood. You say no mortal should wield these eyes? Then I shall gladly become a demon. I will suckle on the souls of the hopeless and liberate the homeland they no longer deserve. What exactly do you mean to do? Did you hear their cries as victory was snatched away from them? Even with their dying breaths, they cursed the Empire. Never has their desire for vengeance been so raw, so true. A god has no need of faith when summoned by so pure a purpose. Summoned? You cannot mean to fight the Empire with a primal. You know full well the danger, the futility of relying on such power. Oh yes, I know their limitations, which is why I will call upon a deity more terrible than the very black worm of the Calamity itself. What? Here? Now? Like hell, you will! An ending to mark a new beginning! My pain! My longing! You shall have it all! This light, is it? His death completed the ritual. The primal is taking shape. Well, can't we stop it? There must be something we can do! There is one thing. What? Hey! Where do you think you're going? Master Louisois briefly contained Bahamut by means of a potent spell of sealing. I will now attempt to do the same. Quick comment, the music that's behind this is a subtle version of the music that was playing during the, uh, I believe it was the uh, Flames of Fate?
Flames of Truth. Which was kind of the the uh, cinematic that was created for between version 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, which shows the original Warriors of Light. Um, basically, the Battle of Cartno uh, had the original Warriors of Light and featured Master Louis Swa uh, as he performed basically what Papa Limo is talking about here. But that's impossible! We would need hours to collect the necessary ether, if not days. Ah, uh, Alfino, though I concede it may not always be apparent, I was ever your grandsire's finest pupil. Tumtumati, of course! The staff still holds enormous power, broken or not. Don't you dare, Papalimo! I know how that spell works. It is time to leave. Quite right. Quickly now, off you go. The further away, the better. No. If you're staying, then so am I. No, Ida. There is a path only you can walk, and it must not end here. Not like this. Take her. Please, you have to take her. This is one battle you cannot fight. Away with you. Go! I bid thee farewell again, my dear Ida. Now, let us see how good a student I truly was. We're sure you joined just as uh, we were having dramatic moments. Well, I didn't really belly flop, I jumped up and three point landed. I do have to say, the first time I did that on my main. I did the the stay with and well, I could probably show you in the end how that goes. Uh, 
pi. Why didn't they let me stay? Papa Lidamo was my friend. I should have been there with him. You can see in his eyes, Ida. He knew what he was doing and what had to be done. Master Louis Suave wore that same look right before the end. You think I don't know that? I know, all right, I know. There's nothing more that we could have done. Bilbo had cut us out all off guard. Even Eskos was powerless to stop him. If you must blame someone, then blame me. Just promise that you will never forget what Papa Limo strove to protect, the lessons he tried to teach you. I don't... Don't speak to me. Leave it with me. Go on. Go back to the Rising Stone and others need to know what happened here. Again, I find myself at a loss for words. But Thancred is right. We must return to the Rising Stones and appraise our companions of all of this. Pray make your way there at once. I will send word to Yashtola and the others are in imminent return. Before we do that, let's watch that same cinematic with last cinematic but pick the other option and hell i'll do it looking like monk that i am Infiltrators did not leave me for long. Lady Ujiri is coming to an end, even as we speak. What do we do? All right, let's 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 pop a little further because this is pretty much you know, same old same old. The key here is, is when we get to that choice of actions. Pretty sure I got the right cutscene. You don't quite need the, the sound at the moment, really. So. 
An end! Okay, so it's not that one. Okay. Ah, that was the belly flop. That was the more back flop in this case. This light, is it? His death completed the ritual. Look, aren't we still? There is one thing. What? Hey! Master Louis Soir briefly contained Bahamut by means of a potent spell of sealing. I will now attempt to do the same. B but that's impossible! We would need hours to collect the necessary ether, if not days! Ah, uh, Alphino, though I concede it may not always be apparent, I was ever your grandsire's finest pupil. Tupzumati, of course! The staff still holds enormous power, broken or not. Don't you dare, Pabalimo! I know how that spell works. It is time to leave! Quite right! Quickly now, off you go! The further away, the better! No! If you're staying, then so am I! No, Ida! There is a path only you can walk, and it must not end here, not like this! Take her! Please, you have to take her! And Crit's like, I don't like it, but <sighs> dot dot dot. What? No! Damn it, Sacred! Put me down! Sacred! This is one battle you cannot fight. Away with you! Go! Here's the choice. But remember, last time was Preston Papalino and leave with the airship. This time, the monk version of me inside the gunbreaker in me. Says, stay at Papa Udomo's side. Where? Hilda, I think he means now. Really, the only difference in the scene is instead of me gritting my teeth again, my dear and jumping Eva. onto the airship, uh, he blasts me onto the airship. All right, 
Continuing back to the road. Uh, I need an alternate timeline when I did that dungeon as well. Would seem you bring ill tidings, brother. Aye. Behind the griffins, Max, we found the grinning face of an old adversary, Ilbert. I know not how, but he had possession of the eyes of Nidhogg, whose dread power he used to initiate a summoning ritual, even as we looked on. Continue ex uh, exposit. By the twelve. I don't understand. To attempt such a magic requires every ounce of one's leader. Not one, not even grandfather could cast it and hope to survive. Indeed, it was ever a last resort. Certain Papalino was there. Thus did the pupil follow in the footsteps of his mouth, even onto the grave. I have as yet been able to explain how Ilbert came to came to possess Nidhogg's eyes. The depths of the sea of clouds, a perpetual storm of water and wind aspect of ether rages. No mortal could endure such conditions. Then mayhap it was the work of an Asian. Now is not the time for idle speculation. Cryo, I have need of your assistance. I yes, yes of course. We must inspect the cocooner light and ascertain the state of the primal trap within. Between our respective talents, I dare say we shall glean some measure of insight. Understood. I can't promise I'll be able to sense a much to the barrier, but I'm, I shall certainly do my best. I shall I. Let us be about it then. But. Not so much of the buy or leave. Pray forgive our for love her brevity. She seeketh employment, lest her, her grief deprive her of the will to act. The desire to comfort Ida doubtlessly compoundeth her unseemly. I too must contend with this grievous loss in by that leave. Elise, Elise, I shall honor our fallen comrade through gainful study. These exist, there exist writings which may yet further our understanding of this concluding light. I hope I was too quick to do it, judge. Running to sadness and regret would be a poor tribute to Abalimo's sacrifice. What? We must begin preparations to face Ilvod's accursed creation without delay. What time we have uh, was purchased at too dear a price for us. So I wish I had more to tell you, but the situation in the each route remains largely unchanged. By the way, there was a, uh, a patch break at this. So me immediately turning around after talking to everybody and then being like, oh, time has passed. <laughs> Meaning we still have no idea how long it will be before communication from the Alliance will come. Yes, of course. Our representatives will be present. Thanks.
Lord from Gadania, the sh council is sh will shortly be reconvened. The alliance leaders have already begun to assemble. They wish to discuss the problem, of course. As of Yishtola's last report, the cocoon yet hung above the wall unchanged. Yes, but the Elder seats here doubtlessly considers our concerns about how it will remain. I am told that Sid Garland has been called in to add his expertise in prison. Wise decision. The more minds we have working on this, the better. Well then, I suggest we leave the Rising Stones to Tataru's capable hands and make haste to the Lotus Stand. Meanwhile, I remember who this is. A word, if you would, good sir. This place, it is within the realm of Eorzea. You're an odd-looking fellow, aren't you? Still, takes all sorts, I suppose. Uh, this here's Vesper Bay, Thanalan's door to the ocean, as some folk like to call it. Am I to understand from your answer that I have indeed arrived in Eorzea? Eh? Yes, you're in Eorzea. A plain response at last, and the one I wanted at that. My journey was not without its hardships, and I would sooner travel by land than put to sea again. <laughs> you do not believe that so small a bar could bear me across the ocean? Such timid little sailors. I had but to set my course, and set my jaw till I made port. <laughs> Though, it would perhaps have been wise to lay down my oars a moment to sup on more than the spray of bride water. By the trembling of my limbs, I sense a brief repast may be in order. Nay, I will not hearken to the feeble grumblings of an empty belly. Duty comes before all. Man, are you all right? Thou art far indeed from home, friend. All right. Actually, very shortcut then you do Gridania. It is my home. Well, technically I got an I got an apart apartment at the goblet and old dot or um Dadlin. Uh, so that I'm closer to my uh, boo, uh, Pippin. Welcome all your light this way, if you please.
Dear friends, pray accept my heartfelt thanks for your efforts in defense of Gridania's borders. I would fain dwell longer on my gratitude for the support of the Alliance, but the situation at Belsar's Wall demands that we forego such pleasantries. According to our most recent intelligence, the cocoon of light that formed in the air above the wall remains undimmed and unbroken. After measuring the cocoon's etheric concentrations, Archon Yishtola has confirmed the presence of a primal entity. <laughs> so we must assume that Ilbert's thrice damned god is indeed trapped within. And what news of the Imperials? They're not like to ignore such a spectacle. Sir, a Galian airship was observed making an approach, but the vessel was destroyed when it drew near. The Empire appears to have made no subsequent attempts to reach the object. The soldiers who witnessed the incident spoke of a lance of light issuing from within the cocoon. Of an entire warship being reduced to smoking ruin in the space of a moment. Veterans of Cartano, meanwhile, likened the destruction to that wrought by the fiery wrath of Bahamut. We could face another calamity. So the Primal is awake, then? Contained, yes, but for how long? We must destroy it now, lest it break free. Agreed. There is, however, the small matter of how to get close enough to a being that swats warships from the sky as you would a bothersome gnat. Is this truly so complex a puzzle? Or have you no stomach for the obvious solution? What in the hells are you doing here? A pleasure to see you too, Garland. Now, if you'd be so kind as to explain to these good people why you should be begging me for my assistance, that would be most appreciated. Who is this man? Oh, how terrifically rude of me. Nero Tolskeva, former Tribunus of the 14th Legion of the Garlian Empire. These days, however, one might say that I'm something of a free agent. What do you want, Nero? I was getting to that. Although you already know what I'm about to propose, old friend. As you have rather belatedly realized, within that frail binding lurks an entity alike in strength to the great Bahamut, and the only force in existence which might conceivably contend with such a foe is the very creation which captured the Elder Primal in the first place. I speak, of course, of Omega. Omega? That hulk has been gathering dust beneath the plains of Cartanau since the Alagans breathed the last. And none alive knows how to wake it. I'm sorry? Do you understand who it is with whom you have the privilege of speaking? I'm Nero Tolskeva. Master Engineer, the mechanical genius who restored the Ultima weapon to full operational capacity.
and as luck would have it, I am graciously offering you the use of my considerable expertise. And what, you just expect us to accept? You're a fool if you think your deeds at the Crystal Tower are enough to win my trust, Nero. Trust? You wound me, Garland. All those years studying side by side at the Academy, sharing both trial and triumph, we were countrymen once, you and I. But sentiment aside, have you a better solution? Or do you mean to send in your vaunted hero there, as you always do, and pray the world is not engulfed in flame? Let us approach the problem in a rational manner. Does not the fact that Omega slumbers in stasis point to the existence of some overriding technology? A means of control? I would ask a question, if I may. Nero, was it not? In the event that we succeeded in using Omega to shackle the Primal in the manner you propose, what then would become of it? Do we not risk repeating the mistakes of the Alagans? Omega is but a tool. How we choose to employ that tool is entirely up to us. Of course, if you would rather leave it buried beneath Cartano while you continue your petty squabbles above, then I suppose that is also your choice. Spare us, Nero. The Seed Seer's concern is a valid one. He who controls Omega wields the power of the gods, the very power which led the Alagans to destroy themselves. And does it not fall to we engineers to prevent such misuse? What was your company's proud slogan? Freedom through technology? Huh. A creed you follow, is it? What say you? Do we take this villain at his word? As will I. I don't like it, but then it doesn't look like we have much choice. Would the Council be willing to entrust this matter to a pair of former Imperials? Yes. The task of restoring the Alagan relic will be yours. But the responsibility for its reawakening must remain with the Council. Do we condone this course of action? Aye. It would seem we do. Let the record show that we invest this contingent with the authority to enter Cartanau and take command of Omega. Sid? I appoint you leader of the expedition. Scions, I would ask that you assign some few of your number to escort Master Garland and supervise the other one. We should be happy to oblige. The politics of Cardinal being what they are, I dare say our neutrality will prove useful in avoiding any unnecessary entanglements. If I am not mistaken, Doma occupies a similarly neutral position. Might we not persuade you to join the expedition, Lady Yugiri? If you suspected any foul play from Nero, you would be welcome to kill him. I just love how all of this is, first I say, 
uh, when it, when Sid asks me if I trust Nero, I of course say, no, I'll keep an eye. And then all of this is including, ask you, Gary, hey, do you want to come and be ready to, <laughs> to kill Nero should anything bad happen? My blade is yours. <laughs> not a moment's hesitation, eh? You'll forgive me if I do not shake your hand. <laughs> You're such an arrogant bastard. I mean... Sure, yeah, he's smart. If anything, I would definitely agree that he probably rival rivals Garland in, in technological knowledge and genius, but whatever. Well, that was rather unexpected development and one which raises a number of questions, not least among them how Nero had a chance to learn the council meeting in the first place. Soon the others are assembling at the airship landing. Elise is already on her way, and it would not do to legs too buff, far behind. Let us be off. Oh, I'm here till five uh, uh, central standard or daylight time, so whatever it is right now. I'm also going to take a quick break anyways. So, see you in a bit. Or in a second. For those watching the VOD. All right. Heading over to the airship lane. Oh, back here. As scouts off and over ready to go, the others have stepped out onto the landing for, for a moment, lest you wonder. Nero insisted that he be allowed to inspect the Excelsior before boarding. And you let him, despite his very timely offer of assistance, the thought of that man poking about in the workings of the ship without proper supervision does not fill you with confidence. Calm yourself, Alphano, your sister was adamant that he would never leave her sight. He and Yagiri are, oh, well, here they are now. Right, I think that's everyone. Shall we set quotes for Cotterno? Uh, might I ask that we delay our departure slightly? I require no more than a few hours at most. Our colleagues are studying the cocoon even as we speak, and I would fear hear the latest observations as we proceed. It 
would seem wise to gain a clear and understanding in the situation as possible before formulating our plan. Oh, I thought time was against us. Oh, foolish. Hold your tongue. When we want your opinion, we'll ask for it. Forgive me, my lady. I shall keep my counsel till such time as you have have finished procrastinating. All right. While Alfano speaks with his colleagues, I shall fly the Excelsior over to Mordona. We can reconvene at the Rising Stones. My apologies for the trouble. I shall visit Ishtola and the others forthwith and join you as soon as I am. Esco's pray accompany Alize back to the Rising Stones. I should feel safer knowing you are present to entertain our guest. Right. Everyone heading to for Mordona is welcome to travel aboard the Excelsior. I'll clear things with the girl at the counter here. Let her know when you're ready to leave. We're traveling Master Garland, sir. The Enterprise Excelsior is right this way. Not quite a door-to-door -door service, but I couldn't exactly land her in the Toll's main square. Shall we adjourn to the Rising Stones, then? I confess I would have expected an order of self-proclaimed warrior scholars to surround themselves with the fruits of man's enlightenment. And yet there's not so much as a single piece of Magitek in sight. It never ceases to amaze me how primitive you Eorzeans truly are. Oh, I'll have you know that the Rising Stones is home to the very latest in Magitek innovation. Wedge calls it the Mark 14 Thermocoil Boil Master, and it's the finest kettle I've ever had the pleasure to own. <laughs> we are returned. Well, Ida and I, at least. Ishtola and the others remained behind to continue their assessment of the binding magic. There didn't seem much point staying just for that, so I decided to come back with Alphano. Papalimo bought us this time. We shouldn't waste it. By your leave! Good God, that voice could fell a gigas. This is the Rising Stones, domicile of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I enter at the invitation of one Lord Urionge. <laughs> I spy you there, Shadow Walker. You always were a hard one to find. Yugiri, do you know this man? Gosetsu, why are you come to Eorzea? In search of you, Yugiri. For days and nights did I row across the angry sea. I made port in good spirits, only for my own flesh to betray me over the trifling matter of an empty belly. Collapsed in the street like an unfed stray I was, until Lord Urionje came to my aid. Over a most welcome meal. 
We spoke of the plight of Doma, and I learned of our displaced countrymen's work to resettle this blighted land. Twas blind fortune that I was able to locate you so swiftly. But now we must make ready to depart. Our master languishes in dire peril, and Doma calls her daughter home. It is not so simple, Gosetsu. There are obligations which bind me here. You... you refuse? Did you mislay your oath during your flight from our homeland? The laws of hospitality must be honored, but surely the vow to defend your master demands the greater obeisance. It was our master who bid me guide our people to safe haven by any means necessary. And it was the scions you see before you who provided us succor and sanctuary when all others refused. Dire peril or no, were I to return without first repaying such hospitality, our master would cut me down at the threshold. Hmm. Mayhap that is so. There is more. A crisis threatens all within this realm, Eorzean and Doman alike, and I go to play my part in its resolution. I will not bring shame upon our liege by abandoning my people or my duty. Hmm, how very noble of you. Now, in the name of honor, kinship, and, ah oh yes, practicality, might I suggest we get this expedition underway? Or would you rather debate the finer points of duty and leave Omega to the Empire? The Empire? You, Giddy? You draw steel against the curse of Gollumold? Then why did you not say so? My blade is oath-bound to fall upon the ranks of the Imperials wheresoever they march. Lead on, Shadow Walker, and may the enemy tremble at our coming. Essigo Sweets, can I speak with you a moment? Volume down. So that they're not doing VO. Mm hmm? Do you remember when I had you meet at the Diamond Forge and we uh, ambushed you? Ah! <laughs> well, once, it, once we had your measurements, I set to work making you a traveling outfit in my spare time. I've only just this moment finished the stitching, but I wanted you to have it before you left. Here. You could try it on right now if you'd like. Assuming you be measured correctly, the fit should be just right. Snug, but not too snug, if you know what I mean. So, how does it feel? You're not just saying that, are you? Are you telling me how much it means to me? We crafted something worthy of the boy of light. It is, well, let's just say it makes all the pr practice worthwhile. Also, so in a blood pearl charm to, you know, Bring you home. They always protect you. This is glamour.
well, venturing in our new outfit. So we have have to wake Mega, right? When do we start? Either you, he shows that's. I am sure. Yes, I won't lie and say I'm completely fine, but I'll feel a lot better if I do doing something useful. Very well. I'll remain here and continue coordinating our efforts with the Alliance. Alphano, may help you would return to Gadania and assist your stroll in cryo. A fine suggestion. The rest of us will form the Count no expedition party. Nero and I will focus on rousing Omega, while Eskos, Ida, and our Doman friends take care of security. The Excelsior is by the lake just outside, side of town. We'll leave as soon as everyone is ready. Time for duty. We haven't far to go. With any luck, we'll be in Cartano before Gotsetsu graces the deck with his dinner. Once there, however, we will best be on our guard, given that uh, Elaine Roya Ryu <laughs> was still active when Omega was discovered. We'd be sure that the, the Empire has long been aware of its existence. And if Nero deemed it was the obvious solution to the threat posed by this new primal, it's not impossible that Garland Hall might do the same. Have your weapons ready and your wits about you. Something tells me we're we're flying into a fight. It says VO. I've enabled the teleporter. One brief jump and we shall arrive in Omega's control room. How convenient. You've been here before. Of course. It was no easy task threading a path through all the skirmishes. But how could I ignore the existence of such a fascinating toy? You may trust that my preliminary examination was suitably thorough. Trust? Aye. I trust your appetite for technology. I chased down a suspect airship, and who should I find but the traitor, Sid Garland. Searching for something, engineer? Something big? It's close, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like all my name days have come at once. Of all the scouts the Empire could have sent. Take care of that brute, will you? God damn it. Can't let Nero tinker around in there by himself. I'm sorry to leave you to it, but I dare say you'll manage without me. This clod has no idea who he's dealing with. Two monks, a ninja, and a samurai. Sounds like some sort of joke. I am Gorsetsu! 
Samurai of Doma, you will rue your choice of opponent this day. Let's say take out the minions first. Surrender, you are outnumbered. Won't be the first time. Are you still playing with those soldiers? <sighs> I suppose I can lend you one of my toys, but only if you promise to give it back. Behold the Red Baron! Now end this nonsense. <laughs> what the? No one told me you'd have magitech armor! Uh, forward! For the Empire! Your honor lets go thinks to abandon his men. I shall see that he shares his, their fate. Pray, attend to the rest of the minions. We are. Uh... It's all over now. Your defense is nothing. Tis my right to strike. No holding back. No surrender! Look upon a samurai of Doma! This will sting. Leave this to me! I like 
to strike! Sending the battle with punishable at death! I order you to stand your ground! Come back here! Please! You haven't seen the last of me, mark my words. It'll be you who rules this day. Central stasis disengaged. All systems operational. Garland? All clear on this side. It's waking up. Omega sensors immediately detected the presence of the cocoon, even at this distance. They must have been set to scan for sources of energy exceeding certain magnitudes. I still don't see any means to control the machine directly. It seems to have been designed to act wholly autonomously. Hmm. Once we release Omega, we can be fairly certain it will attempt to capture the Primal at Belsar's Wall. Assuming its mission is successful, our only option at that point will be to re-engage its stasis system and put it back to sleep. And should the machine happen to misbehave, we'll simply initiate an emergency shutdown. I confess we don't yet have a complete grasp of its capabilities, but I'm certain the details will not elude us for long. Well, I understood less than half of that. So, my question to you is, are we doing the right thing? Well, what do you think? What do I think? Step aside, Sid. Is this the thing I need to press? Uh, yes, that's the one. You gave too much for us to waste this chance, Papalimo. So this is for you. And me. Show us what you can do. Okay, that was not ominous in one way, shape, or form at all.
The launch sequence has begun. Omega is loose. Omega has stopped transmitting. But that shouldn't be. I, I didn't engage the stasis system. And what does this signify? I have little understanding of these contrivances. The launch went exactly to plan, but all signals emanating from Omega have ceased. 
This may indicate any number of things, but we will need to join the Scions out in the field if we are to ascertain which one. Right. I've ordered the malfunctioning beast to go to sleep. That should prevent any unfortunate mishaps. I suggest we make our way back to Gridania. Omega destroyed the cocoon. Papalimo's spell is fading. It was bound to his ether, you see. And if the connection is broken... Forgot I the moment everything was functioning perfectly, and the next we need less so you can hear me better. Uh, one moment everything was functioning perfectly, and the next it wasn't. It makes no sense. We need to see what happened to us for ourselves. Few more orchestra rolls. No. Hey, guess what? We're almost done with uh, Heaven's Word. Words can ill express how glad I am to see you all unharmed. When Omega came hurtling towards the cartoon, everything dissolved into chaos. I have to see it. I have to see it with my own eyes. Ido, wait! We must. Build their seats here, is expecting us. We're not Alpha No. Gosetsu and I will watch over her. You may safely attend your meeting. I think she good. Council reconvened a short while ago. Let us make haste for the Lotus Stand. All there are eager to hear your testimony. Are diable. Yes. Okay. I need to do some quickly. I'm.
Perfect. May not show the helm, but if anything, ooh. Apropos. Did Lotus Sand Okay, no VO. Uh, I totally missed that thing because I clicked into the. You are too kind, Devil Caesar. As I recall, we were, we are good as demand, as good, we as good as demanded the right, right to try. But tell, tell me, how did the battle unfold? We succeeded in waking Omega Eye, but we lost contact with the weapon shortly after it launched. From our position in the cold control room, we were blind to all that followed. But words could do, do justice to such a scene. None in my choosing, that uh, much is certain. But I can give you the facts. The cartoon hatched even as Omega arrived. And from the midst rose a great dragon. The pair, the pair duly set about each other in the skies over Garibanya. The primals might define belief. It seems that the very heavens must be rent asunder by the force of its blows. But it wielded such magics as I've never seen and hope never to see again. The battle raged on and with no end in sight until both combatants were engulfed in a blinding flash of light. When the radiance faded. I saw the, the pair fall motionless from the sky, coming to rest somewhere on the Alamegan soil. I will not speak for the rest, but to my eye, it seemed uh, that each had landed a fatal blow upon the other. Well, most among us could could think only of Bahamut when looking upon the uh, primal's form. The domains we heard heard to whisper the name Shinryu. It would seem that the being resembles the creature of East, the Far Eastern legend, and we have found it convenient to refer to it as such. This Shinryu's fate, and indeed that of Mega, is yet unknown. We have, alas, no eyes on the Garambanian side of the board. Aye. Which is why we have sent a main force under the command of Marshal Tar Tarpin uh, to capture the wall. With the Imperials in disarray, we have the perfect opportunity to secure near Gridania's border and assess the aftermath of the impact. I myself will join the Marshal and his men when the Council is adjourned. Well, that explains a few things. I wager that flash of light coincided with our loss of contact. Lest you wonder, we quickly re-engaged a megastasis system, so even if it has fallen into Empire's lap, it will be of no use to them, say perhaps as a statue. Correct. Without me to guide their efforts, it would take them decades to decipher Omega's core functions, if they managed it at all. Such reassurances do much to calm our fears, yet the relic's fate is but one of several concerns. Indeed. I humbly submit that the time has come for us to make contact with the Resistance representatives in Garibania. Though Ilbert has forced our hand, it would seem only logical to seek an alliance, given the inevitability of Imperial retaliation. By working in concert, it is not impossible that Alamigo might finally be wrested from Galmond's grasp. You must be exhausted. I would 
I would ordinarily suggest that we retire directly to the Rising Stones, but I wonder if you might first make a small detour. Yushtol and the others have gathered at Amarili's uh, spire, and I imagine that you two would be interested to see what has become of the wall now that the cocoon is gone. It is decided then. Lead on. And he leaves before I do. They say that Omega's clash with the Primal shook the very firmament. You need not have worried. The battle took place far above the ground. We were able to observe in relative safety, though I'm given to understand that there were casualties on the far side of the wall. It was like watching a nightmare unfold before our very eyes. Ilbert's Primal manifested in the form of a colossal dragon, a being of pure violence. It burst forth from the cocoon with such terrible force. That such a horror should spring from the eyes of Nidhogg comes as no surprise. Nor do I wonder at its form. Ilbert all but announced it in the moments prior to his death. Plainly, it was his dying wish to visit a second calamity upon the Empire. And I am quite certain the Abomination would have obliged had it not found itself outmatched by a Mega. Gods! I am no stranger to the works of Alag, but even I was unprepared for the machine's furiosity. It beggared belief. And how fares poor Eda in the midst of all this? Have you spoken with her? She is up on the platform, lost in thought. We deemed it best not to disturb her, but mayhap she would welcome some company after all. Shall we? gone. It was all we had left of him. Ida. I don't blame anyone. I knew what was going to happen. I knew the spell Papalimo meant to cast would drain away his life force. I knew that it would only buy us a little time. Ida, there is no need to explain. But there is. I can't hide in Papalimo's little shadow anymore, and I shouldn't hide behind my sister's mask. Twenty years ago, on the day the Empire marched into Alamigo, I was still just a child, not even five summers old. My father had been one of the leaders of the revolution. He had fought to overthrow the mad king, Theodoric. And my sister had fought alongside him. But she was strong and kind, and always knew what to do. But when the Garleans came, everything changed. My father went to war against them too. And I never saw him again. After that, 
I remember a lot of running. My sister dragged me for malms and malms until we came to the city of Charlian. That was where she met Master Louis Soir. He introduced her to the Circle of Knowing, and she eventually became an Archon. She was your inspiration. Is that not why you took up her mask and her name? Or did you simply mean to continue what she had started? You've known all along, haven't you? That I wasn't Ida. Of course. We all recognized you at once. It was Papalimo who persuaded us to maintain the charade. It was silly to think I could fool you. I knew that even then, but I... I sort of... decided not to know. Ida died six years ago, on a mission to smuggle refugees out of Alamigo. They say she was overwhelmed by Imperial soldiers when she stayed behind to save a little girl. She was so strong. There must have been a lot of them. Right, here's the thing. All the rest of the Scions, they knew. I didn't. I'm going to ask him, or tell me. I'm sorry for lying to you. My real name is Lys. When Papalimo brought me Ida's mask, it was meant as a keepsake, but I decided I wanted to be his new partner, to keep alive all the good that she had done. I didn't want to become Ida, exactly. At the time, though, I still didn't know who I was myself. And it almost seemed easier to play the role. Papalimo agreed to help, of course, but it was never what he wanted for me. He wanted me to walk my own path. And those were his final words to me. The Archon's mark he gave me is faded, and my last excuse along with it. So this is it. Whatever I choose to do from now on, I do as lease. And I choose to continue my family's fight. I want Alamigo to be the country that Ida and my father always wanted it to be. War is upon us once more. Do you regret standing against the Empire? Would you have chosen a different road, knowing what you know now? To claim that I never doubted the decision would be a lie. But I made my choice, and I have defended it with blade in hand ever since. The battle continues, and our steel is needed. Come, Shadow Walker. We leave for the east, for Doma. It was brave of Elise to remove her mask after so long. Though she has scarce begun to come to terms with Papa Lima's loss, that one act may plain, made plain her determination to move forward. And should she ever falter, we shall be there to support her on this road. She walked as she has resolved to walk. Let's return to the Rising Stones. We have quite a story to tell Tataru and my sister.
And that is the end of the he Heavenward expansion. I'm going to skip the credits. And we are, will return here in about like five minutes. This is just a stream break. Make sure my videos aren't too long when they go over to the don't forget to visit hubsonline.com hubsonline YouTube and then we'll be starting Stormblood I'll be back